Hi, this is Dao Too Fast here, and I just finished a project to get remote access to opening and closing your garage door. And the device I'm using to do this is something called a Belkin Wemo Switch. On my phone, I have an app running to control the Wemo Switch, and all I have to do is toggle the Wemo Switch on and off. So let me show you how it's done. Here is the Wemo switch. So let me open this up and show you what's inside. Here we have the Wemo switch quick install guide. This is the switch itself. So let's set one of these up and just follow the instructions that came with the unit. First thing you want to do is plug in the unit. So there's power going to it. Here I'm installing the Wemo app on my Android phone. You need to first go into the settings. Select Wi-Fi. You should see the Wemo switch access point. Select that and connect to it. Once it's connected, you need to go into the advanced option, advanced Wi-Fi on the screen, disable the allow Wi-Fi scanning and also disable the switch to mobile data. Let's go back. Now we'll open up the Wemo app. Now what you want to do is connect to your home's Wi-Fi and enter your Wi-Fi password for remote access the message here tells you that you can control the Wemo switch anywhere you have internet access click OK when you're done press the done button here Now you see the Wemo switch device and pressing the power button will toggle the switch on and off. Here we have a firmware update available. Do you want to update it? Yes. Accept and upgrade. Here it tells you that the update can take up to 10 minutes and you want to wait until the light is no longer flashing. Once the LED stops flashing, then the upgrade is completed. Go back into settings, go into your advanced Wi-Fi setting, and you want to enable these two options back on. Right now you're looking at my garage door opener. This is the Genie Pro, and I've taken the front cover off. So you can see the terminal strip right over here. The two screw terminals here goes to the safety sensor for the garage door opener. The two on the left, those wires connect to the garage door opener switch, like this one right here, and it connects to the back terminal of the switch. So whenever you press the switch, it shorts out these two contacts. It opens and closes the garage door opener. As a quick test, I'm going to short out those two terminals to simulate me pressing the switch and the garage door opener should open and close. Let me do that right now. I'll do it again. So on the Wemo switch we're going to simulate the same thing by using a relay where the relay will open and close the switch whenever I turn on and off the Wemo switch. To do this project you only need a few parts and of course you need the Wemo switch which I have right here. In the middle this is a relay. I'll be using a 30 amp single pole double throw or SPDT relay 
And the reason I'm using this is simply because I have a bunch of these in my garage. I use it for automotive installs. You don't need to use a relay that is high current like this one. Now, pay attention to the relay that you use because the coil side on the relay is rated for a certain voltage to energize. So right here, you see 12 volt DC. That tells you that this relay requires 12 volt power source to energize, so the internal switch will open and close. Here on the right, this is the power supply I'll be using to energize this relay. As I mentioned, this relay I'm using is 12 volt to energize a coil. So if you look at the output of this transformer, the output tells you that it outputs 12 volt DC. To help explain how this works, I've drawn this diagram. In the middle, this is my relay. On the left side, this is the 12 volt power supply that will be plugged into the Wemo switch. Whenever the Wemo switch turns on, the power supply will output 12 volt through the coil in the relay. It will energize it, and this normally open switch will close, completing the circuit that's wired back to the garage door opener, these two terminals right here. Now after you turn on the Wemo switch and the relay energizes and the switch closes, you don't want to leave it in that state. Turn off the Wemo switch and then the switch will open back up. The first thing I'll do is connect the power supply to the coil on the relay. The good thing about the coil inside the relay is that it's not polarity sensitive so you don't have to worry about which one's positive or negative. Now with this relay, I'll be using crimp on terminals so you don't have to do any soldering. On the relay, the coil side is going to be 85 and 86, these two right here. Now I have this wire, which I'll use to connect from the relay to the garage door opener. And here I'll be connecting to 30 and 87. This 30, this 87. The middle one is the normally closed side of the switch. I will not be using that. Near my garage door opener unit, there is an AC outlet right here. I'll be connecting the Wemo switch right here the Wemo switch with the power adapter connected. I ran the wire over here down to this. Here's a relay. The output of the relay is going to the bottom set of wires. The top ones are the original ones that goes to the switch. So let's test it out. Here I'm going to open up the Wemo app. Here is my Wemo device. Now I'm going to press the power button. Turn it off. After you're done, you can see the door closing. I'll do it again. After you finish testing the setup and making sure everything works, you want to clean up the wiring here. Now depending on which relay you used, if you used one where you had to solder, make sure you put it in an enclosure so that none of the wires will short up with anything else. Now with this relay that I'm using, as you can see, all the connections are insulated. So I can easily mount this onto the bracket, say right here. As you can see, it works very well. Now I'll be working on the other side because I bought a second Wemo switch so I can get the other garage set up also. I want to point out that Belkin actually makes another device called a Wemo Maker. And that device will do the same thing as what I'm trying to do here, but actually simpler because it has its own built-in contacts 
for you to set momentary on. Now you might wonder, well, if that's the case, why am I using the Wemo switch instead? It's simply because of cost. The Wemo Maker retails for $80 and the Wemo switch retails for $50. And for this project, I actually bought mine at Fry's Electronics. They had on sale for $33 each for the Wemo switch. Also, if you have to do two garage doors, the costs add up quite a bit. That's why I chose the Wemo switch instead of the Wemo Maker. I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And don't forget to click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.